right to equality before courts and tribunals and to a fair trial. General Comment No. 32, 2007, of the Human Rights Committee, General Remark. 1. This general comment replaces General Comment No. 13, 21st Session. 2. The right to equality before the courts and tribunals and to a fair trial is a key element of human rights protection and serves as a procedural means to safeguard the rule of law. Article 14 of the Covenant aims at ensuring the proper administration of justice, and to this end guarantees a series of specific rights. 3. Article 14 is of a particularly complex nature, combining various guarantees with different scopes of application. The first sentence of paragraph 1 sets out a general guarantee of equality before courts and tribunals that applies regardless of the nature of proceedings before such bodies. The second sentence of the same paragraph entitles individuals to a fair and public hearing by a competent, independent and impartial tribunal established by law, if they face any criminal charges or if their rights and obligations are determined in a suit at law. In such proceedings, the media and the public may be excluded from the hearing only in the cases specified in the third sentence of paragraph 1. Paragraphs 2 to 5 of the article contain procedural guarantees available to persons charged with a criminal offense. Paragraph 6 secures a substantive right to compensation in cases of miscarriage of justice in criminal cases. Paragraph 7 prohibits double jeopardy and thus guarantees a substantive freedom. Namely, the right to remain free from being tried or punished again for an offense for which an individual has already been finally convicted or acquitted. States parties to the covenant, in their reports, should clearly distinguish between these different aspects of the right to a fair trial. 4. Article 14 contains guarantees that states parties must respect, regardless of their legal traditions and their domestic law. While they should report on how these guarantees are interpreted in relation to their respective legal systems. The committee notes that it cannot be left to the sole discretion of domestic law to determine the essential content of covenant guarantees. 5. While reservations to particular clauses of Article May 14 be acceptable, a general reservation to the right to a fair trial would be incompatible with the object and purpose of the covenant. 6. While Article 14 is not included in the list of non-derogable rights of Article 4, Paragraph 2 of the Covenant, states derogating from normal procedures required under Article 14 in circumstances of a public emergency should ensure that such derogations do not exceed those strictly required by the exigencies of the actual situation. The guarantees of fair trial may never be made subject to measures of derogation that would circumvent the protection of non-derogable rights. Thus, for example, as Article 6 of the Covenant is non-derogable in its entirety, any trial leading to the imposition of the death penalty during a state of emergency must conform to the provisions of the Covenant, including all the requirements of Article 14. Similarly, as Article 7 is also non-derogable in its entirety, no statements or confessions or, in principle, other evidence obtained in violation of this provision may be invoked as evidence in any proceedings covered by Article 14, including during a state of emergency. Except if a statement or confession obtained in violation of Article 7 is used as evidence that torture or other treatment prohibited by this provision occurred. Deviating from fundamental principles of fair trial, including the presumption of innocence, is prohibited at all times.